Is that a micro SD card adapter one? Yeah. It's probably not going to work. That's what it's yelling about on the other one. Get rid of that menu for me. Thank you. The center camera, even in both slots, it's not properly. Okay. So we never get two sides.
celebration. This year's class of graduates is the largest class in the past five years. You may now be seated. Throughout the ceremony this evening, we know that you're excited. We ask that you celebrate in a way that is respectful to everyone in attendance. This is a formal ceremony, and in that spirit, we want you to recognize each student's success, but we, we ask that you refrain from noise making, calling out individual names, and other disruptive cheering during the ceremony. At this time, please take a moment to check your cell phones and ensure that they are silenced. Thank you. This evening, at our 150th commencement, we celebrate each graduate and the role they have played in positively impacting our Hill Campus community. Before you are scholars, thespians, musicians, athletes, entrepreneurs, employees, and the list could go on. This class is a talented and inspired group. They have overcome obstacles, taken on new challenges, failed, and tried again. Each graduating senior has achieved this milestone because of their hard work, resilience, and because of the encouragement and support of many people surrounding them. I would like to take an opportunity to thank some of these significant groups of people. To the families, friends, and loved ones of our seniors, you have guided and shaped them, sometimes redirected and challenged them. They have made you laugh, perhaps at times cry, and I am sure they have worn you out on many occasions. But here they are. They made it. <laughs> Families and friends of these students, I'd like you to take a minute and please stand so we can recognize you. <laughs> Yeah. 
in addition to the friends and families of graduates, I want to thank our Columbia Borough School Board of Directors for always seeking the best interests of our students and working tirelessly to provide a learning environment in which each one of these graduates has had the opportunity to fulfill their highest potential. CBSD Board of Directors, please stand. And finally, our Hill Campus family, our teachers, staff, and administrators. During the past school year, you have spent well over 1,200 hours on this campus with these soon-to-be graduates. You have engaged them, offered guidance, coached them, served them meals, cleaned their spaces, and welcomed them at the door with a warm smile when they happen to arrive just a little bit late. <laughs> Each of you has made a significant impact on their lives, both visibly and behind the scenes. Would all of our Hill Campus teachers, staff, and administrators please stand? <laughs> Class of 2022, I want you to take a minute and look at the gathering of people in front of you. This is your community. You have belonged here. You have mattered here. As you embark on your next adventure, take pieces of this community with the new communities you join. Find people like the ones you see in front of you, people who love you, and advocate for you, challenge you to grow into better versions of yourself, remind you that you matter, and invite you to dream big. Steve Jobs, an American visionary and co-founder of Apple Computer, dreamed big. In the late 1970s, he designed something new and transformed how we work, learn, and communicate around the world today. In 1997, long before you were born, he narrated a commercial that went something like this. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in square holes, the ones who see things differently. While some may see them as crazy, we see genius. Because the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who actually do. Class of 2022, think differently. Be a misfit. Be a round peg in a square hole. Be crazy enough to think that you can change the world because you can and you will. It is my pleasure to now introduce our student speakers this evening. Each of these student leaders of the class of 2022 possesses the qualities and characteristics of which Columbia is proud. They have worked hard and persevered and held fast to their big dreams. Please join me in welcoming the first of our student speakers, Ethan Schmidt, to the podium. Good evening, administration, faculty, school board members, family, and friends. My name is Ethan Schmidt, and I'm here tonight along with Kylie Ashton, Elena Morales, Robert Fulman, Irene Hanna, and Sarah Hollibus to celebrate the class of 2022. This evening, my fellow speakers and I are going to ask you all to reflect on your life and what has become a defining moment for each of you and what has led you to this moment. For each of us, our defining moments differ, but we all share one in common tonight. A defining moment is a point in your life when you're urged to make a critical decision or when you're experiencing something that fundamentally changes you. Not only do these moments define us, but they have a transformative effect upon our perceptions and behaviors. My defining moment is not glamorous or outstandingly profound. It happened quite mundanely, like the apple that fell in Sir Isaac Newton and inspired his laws of gravity. My defining moment came to me at work. 
three hours into my shift. I had stayed at 342 frames so far. I was in the midst of daydreaming when I suddenly became aware of my surroundings. When had I stayed at this many frames? How long have I been at work? I was on autopilot, mindlessly plugging away at my task. Right then and there, I made a silent promise to myself. I will not work an unfulfilling job just for a paycheck. Since then, I have dedicated myself to taking a more active role in my own life. I am responsible for my own time and energy. It is up to me to divert my energy to what is most beneficial. To really achieve my goals, I must break my complacency. I must no longer take a passive stance in my own life. It is time for me to make those defining decisions about college and careers. We all have defining moments that will push us in wild directions. Many of us will find our defining moments in our everyday lives. Others have broken bones, had surgery, or even had decisions made for us that change our lives. Whatever your defining moment may be, remember that only you have the power to define your future. As I stand here today, I've struggled writing this speech. I believe, probably like many of you, that I didn't have any defining moments. It was when I spoke to my peers, I realized I have had many defining moments. They aren't big events or personal narratives, but they are what have made me who I am today. I am defined by my expectations, those set by myself, my family, my friends, my teachers, and my peers. I am expected to be a daughter, a sister, an honor student, and a leader. These expectations weigh heavily on me. They influence every aspect of my life. I maintain a balancing act between my many responsibilities at home, school, and work. At school, I maintain three leadership roles, being president of the senior class, National Honor Society, and student council, all while trying to keep a 4.0 GPA. At times, I will ask myself why I signed up for all these responsibilities. I get stressed out with so many things on my plate at once, but I know it is all for the best. If I'm being honest, I don't struggle with normal teen problems. Well, other than stress, I struggle with how others look at me, my reputation, and keeping my grades up. I always want to be looked at in a positive way, and I want others to see me in a positive light. Keeping this reputation and this perspective takes lots of time, effort, and constant worry in case something were to go wrong. I am harder on myself than anyone, including my peers and my family. My expectations were set for me by my family. I was the firstborn, so everyone wanted me to be the best. I was pushed to be my best from how I carry myself, my reputation, and my grades. All of this has led to the things I'm proud of, my defining moments. These moments started when I look back on my four years of high school. I am proud of how far I've come since my freshman year. In school, I made it a point to be involved in all aspects of my high school career. I played softball and volunteered in the community. I have a part-time job since my sophomore year and held leadership positions, all while maintaining good grades. All of these have led to me to where I stand today. They are small things, but when added together, they define who I am. All of these moments have all these moments have led to where I am today, and I'll continue to improve on my next four years on my educational journey. Honestly, this moment, as of right now, is my defining moment. There are moments in all of our lives that make us who we are today. As Ethan and Kylie previously mentioned, these moments do not always have to be big events. It may not even be the moment exactly that affected us, but maybe how we chose to react. Today, I would like to share with you a defining moment in my life. Mine was my spinal surgery. For those who don't know, on November 7th, 2019, I underwent an eight-hour surgical procedure known as spinal fusion surgery, where a surgeon placed two metal rods and 16 screws along my spine to both fuse and reconstruct my spine. I made the decision to go through with the surgery due to a 55-degree curve that had caused both pain and deformity for me. At the time, I didn't know how much it would change my life. If anything, I was very excited to have this done. While following the procedure, everything I knew wants to be so normal were then things that I struggled with for months. Things like getting out of bed, walking around, 
sitting up, getting dressed, or even tying my shoes. Things that a majority of us wouldn't think twice about doing were then things that I could not do without the assistance of another. This caused a massive drop in my self-esteem. It feels like I haven't been the same since. I remember the exact moment when I looked into the mirror after my surgery. If it were not for my mom and my nurse being there, I can say with certainty I would have cried. It was at that moment where I felt mentally defeated. No one really tells you the effects surgeries like these can have on your mental state. For months, I felt like nobody would understand me, and all I wanted to do was push everyone I loved away, and that's exactly what I did. Every time I looked in the mirror, every time I tried on new clothes, and every time I looked into a camera, I felt reminded of how I did during those times. You see, it wasn't the surgery that affected me, but the after effects of no longer feeling quote unquote normal. Over time, I did heal physically and I regained some normality. However, by the time I did, COVID had found its way to destroy that. We went on a lockdown only a few months after my recovery. But after a long, long battle of finding my place again and working towards bettering myself, my main takeaway was to appreciate the little things in life that many of us take for granted. I would have never thought that something as simple as sitting up could be as hard as it was for me. Along with this, I was also very grateful to have the opportunity because not many people have that option. I will forever be reminded of this defining moment of my life, not only for what I faced, but how I grew from it. To this day, I still struggle with self-image and self-worth, but I do not and will not let it hold me back like it has. As we close this chapter in life, I implore you to look back on your own defining moment in your life and how about you to where you are today. Throughout high school, I learned a lot about those around me. I learned how we're all so different from one another, but also how we're all connected. We each go through silent struggles, yet we fail to understand that of each other. Some may face new challenges every day, and others may still be haunted by past experiences. But it's these struggles that shape us into who we are and affect the decisions we make in the future. These are our defining moments. Whether good or bad, these moments serve as a reminder of who we were, how we grew, and where we are today. There's a quote by Frederick Douglass that, for the past two years, I repeated to myself whenever I felt overwhelmed with the things affecting my life at once. It goes, without a struggle, there can be no progress. With this, I knew that better days were ahead, and that I would soon learn and build from my position. We've all come a long way, and we've all felt the effects of COVID, and social media, and the effects that that had on us, the online classes and the struggles that followed that. These past years were not easy, but we still made it. Be proud of what you've accomplished and all you've fought for to make it through. Like Elena, and many of you know, my defining moment was a physical event that affected my life. On Monday, September 9th, 2019, I heard the sound like a wooden bat breaking as I was falling to the ground. This was when I knew my life would change forever. Lying down on the soft green grass with adrenaline running through every minute of my body didn't allow me to fathom what just happened. Later that night, while I was lying in a hospital bed in the dark, with my parents sleeping to the left of me, all I could do was think. Think about that moment, but not really know what was going to happen in the long run. Surgery was a success, and then my journey to recovery began. I was so relieved to go home, but when I got home, my first, uh, my first obstacle in this path occurred. I was going up the steps into my house and I lost my balance and began to fall backwards. I tried to catch myself from falling by stepping with my broken leg. I felt my leg collapse and it was extremely painful. My eyes began to tear up. I blinked and one tear ran down my cheek. Right then and there, reality had set in. This was my defining moment. I was so irritated and discouraged that I wasn't normal. My injury took a huge toll on me mentally. I felt disconnected from what I loved, even though it was right in front of me. I was truly in a depressed state of mind, although my smile displayed differently to others. My therapy process started. Having two hardworking parents living in two different households didn't make parenting any easier. Thankfully, with the support of the community, the community, the burden of my parents was took, took on was eased greatly. So to help my parents, people gave me rides to therapy, and some even offered to pay for my bills. I'm forever grateful for what this community did for me and my family. Then COVID hit us all, and in a blink of an eye, everything changed once again. 
physical therapy came to a halt, and I was now stuck at home with therapy games to continue on my own. With having to do therapy at home, it really made me question my commitment. We all know how easy it is to procrastinate while not having a certain degree of accountability. Not only did I question my commitment, but also question how bad I wanted it. I wanted to defy the odds that were against me. A lot of people thought I wasn't going to come back from injury, or that I wasn't going to be the same. Well, I guess you could say they were right. I turned out even better than I was before my injury. I proved all those naysayers wrong. I used my adversity as my motivation to become better. And not better, not just better in sports, but better in all aspects of life. Before my injury, I didn't have the goals as I do now. This was a wake up call to not take life for granted. I became appreciative of life. It started in sports. I trained harder than ever because my trainer gave me the opportunity to train during COVID. I became faster and stronger, both physically and mentally. I know I couldn't just stop there. I wanted to say achieve greatness and knew that sports wasn't the only way. I started taking the classroom more seriously because I knew the opportunities it would create for me. I started thinking about my future. Then it translated to the community. I wanted to, I wanted to get back to the town that I grew up in. I, along with my teammates, wanted to give the younger generation a strong foundation to build on and something to look forward to. I wanted to show the same support they showed not only me, but others. This was my defining moment because my injury drove me to do things outside my expectations. I realized it wasn't the injury that defined me, it was how I responded to it. The journey is my defining moment. It made me into who I am today because I realized it's bigger than me. A defining moment can be a point in your life when you feel that things are about to change or when a change is needed, like it was for Ethan and Kylie, or when you experience something that fundamentally changes you, like Elena and Robert. It can also be a decision, whether impulsive or well thought, that shape us into who we are today and who we will be tomorrow. A life-changing decision that was made for me by my parents at just the age of one was my family moving to America. I was brought up to a country that was completely different from where my family was raised. Luckily for me, it was an easy adjustment because I came out at such a young age. On the other hand, my parents and siblings suffered tremendously to get us to where we are today. That decision made me the person who's standing before you today giving this speech. Even though my parents decided for us to come to the States, it has been by far a defining moment that I overlook and sometimes take for granted. Even though Egypt, my home country, is rich in culture, America has more accessible opportunities. My father was an electrical engineer, and my mother had an HR job back home. My parents decided to leave everything they had behind because they were thinking about the future of their own children. They wanted us to live the life they were not able to have, so we moved to a new country that had different expectations. I never realized how fortunate I was to be living here until I talked to my cousins who lived back home in Egypt. And so ahead of Egypt, schooling is very different. At, one, at the end of one senior year, students must take a test that is designed to determine what career path they will take. It defines who they are and how they will spend the rest of their life. Here, that grade or test does not define me. I have a school system that allows me to dream, work hard, and choose the career I think best suits me rather than being chosen for me. Here, I get to live the life my people wish to live. It motivates me to not take any opportunity for granted, especially going to college to pursue my dream career. I see it as an obligation to myself and my family to make them proud. I'll be going to Penn State for biobehavioral science and eventually become a physician assistant. When my family looks at me today and any other day, my hope is that they see the decision they made did not go to waste, but rather one of the best decisions they ever made. I achieved many things, such as being an honorable student, an Atalo scholar, a member of student council, vice president of National Honor Society, and a police servant at my church. I am just getting started. And tonight, I can finally say, class, to, to, oh gosh, class, to, to, I am and will continue to make myself and my family proud. My defining moment needed to be made for me. It motivated me to work harder every day because I was given an opportunity many would beg for. Not only did I want to make myself proud, but also my parents, who sacrificed so much for my brothers and I. 
I am standing before you today to encourage you to reflect on your life and find your own defining moment. As Rainey and the others have stated, a defining moment is as unique as the individual. When many of us are asked to identify a defining moment in our lives, we recall a positive core memory. For many parents in the crowd, they recall the moment each of us were born. From then on, they remember our first word, first steps, and now graduation. In reality, Many defining moments are not at all positive. A defining moment refers to a moment that helps shape your identity and view of life. Defining moments are hard to forget, even if we attempt to mask them. Teenagers, as a whole, experience similar pivotal moments in our high school careers. This may include our first bad grade, first kiss, getting our licenses, or getting our first jobs. We all experienced the impacts through the pandemic throughout our sophomore, junior, and senior years. While we all shared these moments together throughout our high school experience, each and every individual has their own moments that they may not have shared. While some defining moments are positive and cherished, my life-changing moment was not. Near the end of my sophomore year, close to my 16th birthday, I took steps to escape the domestic abuse I had been experiencing since I was a child. I have known many of my classmates since kindergarten, and none of them knew what I had been experiencing at home. While I had gotten rid of the violence in my life, the pain had only started. I was faced with the task of creating my own normal. Being out of the high-risk situation opened a door for me to mold myself and my life into the way I wanted it. I was in full control, but still felt helpless. I was now living in a single parent home, which many of you on the stage can relate to as well. After visibly struggling for a few months, I was officially diagnosed with PTSD, depression, and severe anxiety. My symptoms worsened over a short period of time, which led me to change my schooling to online only. I fell into my depression, which led me to barely get out of bed. Through this, I still managed to keep up my GPA, and tonight I stand before you as our class valedictorian. <laughs> when dealing with a lack of motivation, this is not as easy as you may think. Everyone still saw me as the girl to ask for homework help and answers. After a few months of isolation, I realized that I did not want to live this way any longer. I reached out for help and started going to therapy as well as becoming closer in my faith. I got out of and stopped reaching for relationships that were no good for me. I started choosing only quality people to be in my life, even if that only meant having a select few. I made a goal for myself to strive to make my younger self proud of where I am today. I became okay with standing alone. I am not a victim, but a survivor. I chose to use my experience to help other people in any way I could. I advocate for domestic and child abuse victims. I share my experiences with mental health to help break down the stigma in our society. Had I fallen into the temptation of my mental illness, I would not be on this stage giving you this speech. No matter what defining moments you have in your life, we created this one, graduating, together. We all will have many more defining moments throughout our lives, careers, and families. However, I want you to hear me when I say, you can create your own defining moments. You can choose to heal. You are not what has happened to you. You are what you choose to become. Our senior class shared many inspirational moments together, such as football section champions, as well as basketball district champions. Our girls' basketball team were section champions and went to districts. Our drama department pulled off two amazing performances, and our band and chorus did as well. Many of us took college courses this year, and many worked jobs, all while still coming to the Hill every day. These were all defining moments. As we close our speeches this evening, we want to leave you with a final thought. 
Every single person on this stage is strong. You've, you've overcome things in your life that only you, you may know about. You've walked to stay here. For those who may be silently struggling, I am proud of you for every achievement you have made, even if it's getting out of bed each morning. I encourage you to reach out for help and talk about whatever stuff you may have. Healing is a process and an ongoing cycle. It isn't always easy. I chose to start my healing process, and you can too. Think to yourself and others that you can achieve any of your dreams. Do not let any form of stigma hold you back from seeing who you are and who you can become. Remember, you get to choose the life you live. I cannot wait to see how far you will make it, and I'm beyond proud of each and every single one of you. You're really out. Yeah. Listen, y'all, we did it. <laughs> we surpassed all the obstacles high school presented. I'm extremely proud of every single one of you. This is the only, begin only beginning of something special. Life is about the journey, not the destination. And in this journey, you will face some adversity, but not only creates your character. We've all made it, and we've all taken on the challenges high school had to offer and pushed past me enough to stand here today. I am proud of the class of 2022, and I look forward to seeing what we all have in store outside these halls. And I wish everyone good luck with all future endeavors. <laughs> Throughout the years and all of the challenges, we have all made it to the defining moment we all share, graduation. Now just continue growing and succeeding, and remember to keep doing what you're doing, and don't worry what others think. I'm proud of our accomplishments, despite the many setbacks we have faced thus far. I'll be even more proud of our futures. Don't let life define you. Go out there and define life. challenging us to all create our own defining moments. You embody the spirit of this class. Thank you. At this time, we will begin presenting the class of 2022 with their diplomas. Mr. Charles Lear, Board President, who will be joined by Dr. Ashley Rizzo, Superintendent, and me. Ms. Kendall Pancake and Mr. Mark Sims, Hill Campus Assistant Principals, will be reading the names of our 2022 graduates. Ethan Schmidt. Holler 
Gabriel Acosta. Marquise Angel Aguilera. Leilani Lene Alisea. Dylan Andres. Donovan Arenas. Jaslyn Baez. Shayla Marie Barley. Matthew Bautista. Sydney Elizabeth Bernadine. Morgan Grace Bigler. Zane Buckles. Mackenzie Page Bird. Carmen Belinda Kale. Javon Amir Kalazo. Abigail Unique Cruz Sawyer. Amber Elizabeth Call. Archie May Call. Anthony Neville De Silva. Jalen Vernil Dobson. Andrew Kobe Eichner. Joy Bernard Isanison. Matthew Dylan Eister. Leah Marie Fry. Ariana Michelle Gann. John Giles. Terry Glover. Dylan Scott Helpfinger. Troy Kurtzall. Stephen Wei Huang. Shalia Johnson. Clayton Jose Rosario. Georgetta Marlene Caulfield. Dawson King. Taylor Kennedy. Gabrielle Keogh. John Francisco Lopez Jr. Shay Caroline Madison. Dante Manuel Griffin. Victoria Rose. Mason McClare. (laughs) 
Olivia May Menard. Elijah Mendez. Noe Moretta. Hunter Lee Morrison. Derek Lee Nell. Nyla May Nell. Joel Daniel Ober. Joel Manuel Ortega. Ashton Paulus. Israel Rafael Perez. Noah Pinkerton. Luke Douglas Redden. Nathan Gregory Rissinger. Jordan Rose. Elena Marie Rydell. Juliana Rivas. Jose Antonio Rivera Ojeda. Allison Raquel Rodriguez. Angel Rose. Elijah Ruiz. Santiago Berrigan. Jessica Aileen Sabina. Jennifer Smith. Shauna Nicole Smith. Nate Spencer. Bryn Riley Speaks. Douglas Andrew Sumpman Jr. Jamaya Ashley Taylor. Rizmari Ben Garcia. Damaris Ivy Torres. Lissandra Liz Torres. Dakota Banks Trimble. Deja Janet Tucker. Emily Elizabeth Wall. Philip D. Allen Wade.
Anthony Welsh. Daisy Wickenheiser. Devin Michael Wright. Thank you. 